Hey, hey you guys. guys. Guys, with the Hood trilogy, we've achieved something that we haven't really had in British film very often, which is a British trilogy, but it hasn't been celebrated as such. What do you think it is about urban kind of non-fluffy, lovey stories that we just won't embrace, the British film industry just won't embrace? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you answered your own question, really. I think it's the fact that it's urban, non-fluffy stories, you know what I mean? I think, essentially, this is the first British trilogy, I believe. I'm trying to think of the... If Closely the, followed by Bridget Jones. 40s, yeah. Closely followed by Bridget Jones, but wow. I think this is, this is the first one in a long time. That speaks for itself. Um, I, I don't know. I think it's like it's almost like sort of dismissed as in like, okay, guys, great that you've done that, but you know, scuttle back off now. Mm. Um, you know, because I guess the 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 audience they don't feel is big enough, so sometimes they're dismissed. If I can start to kind of hone in on individual characters a little bit, we've got to talk about Daly. Obviously, he's got the Essex boy kind of charisma that you expect, but you cut straight through that to the menace. I guess I'm wondering <coughs> how you found that still in him. I mean, he's vile but also incredibly likeable, and that's a really fine line to tread. Like so kind of <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering how you, how you got there, how you found that in him, so it wasn't just like a Danny Dyer geezer, but actually had that real line of kind of fear in him. Yeah, I, I think finding the balance for Daly, you know, being honest, is probably down to the direction and working with Noel. You know, we're, we're obviously incredibly close, um, and having that person there to just go, look, we, we want to make, you know, Noel was very clear from the off, we don't want it to become a caricature, we want it to be truthful, we want it to be real, he needs to be nasty. And I'll be like, Noel, can I really say that? Are we going to be all right? He's like, look, trust me, it's, it's going to work. And it's having that balance of knowing when to, to push the levels and when to pull it back and just be still. And um, so, yeah, I think it, it was that collaboration that really helped, you know, and we rehearsed, which was great. You know, you don't often get that in a low, low budget, you know, British movie, you know, or even in the big movies don't get time. So we were sort of quite lucky, I was lucky to sit down you know, we know and work that through and what do we want to hit in this scene and what we're we really trying to say. So, yeah, a combination of all those those things. Mm -hmm. and, and coming to you, Arnold, Henry obviously has had a real kind of script flip here. It, suddenly he's at the moral centre of the mm. story and he's this sort of, he's, he's the heart of it. I want to particularly talk about your scene with Stormzy. So yeah. Henry and Yards in the car, that yeah. real kind of, that's it, breaking point moment. How did you guys block that out? How did the scene evolve? And just, yeah, how did you get that? It was so powerful. I remember when I first got the script and I read that and I was like, rah. <laughs> I was like, rah, no really did a number on this script here. Do you know what I mean? And, and you know what, to, just to keep it honest, really, like, no script writing, his skills, like, it's, he, like he's, he's an amazing script writer. The reason I say that is because a writer, a writer who can make the public hate you, but then make the public love you, that's a lot of skill in there, do you know what I mean? And I was talking in terms of his character. <laughs> but with my character, um, you know, he's like you said, he's been pushed to the forefront in this film. And um, I've said it before and I say it again, I love how he's incorporated in the fact that, you know, Henry's not like the others. But to be honest, he was like that in he was like that in adulthood he already. He was always different from he the others. He was the one that said he didn't wanna rob and uh, he wanna, yeah. take it further. And then he and ended then up getting bricked. Hit with the brick, yeah. So he's always had uh, Moral morals. Compass. Yeah, he's always had a moral compass. But he's you know much I mean? more of a follower before and he seems to be so much more in charge of his own destiny. Yeah. Well, no, I wouldn't say he was a follower said. before, he was, he was not a follower, he wasn't was not. really a follower because he was brave enough to stand up to plan B and, I say, yeah, true, yeah. True. and say, I don't want to do this and stuff like that. And that's how he ended up getting hurt in the first place. But yeah. with, with, with Brotherhood now, I feel like I just love his character even more because we, we didn't, in adulthood, we didn't get to tap into his, his character fully. Do you mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. now you get to see what Henry's really about. And you he's, get to he's married now. You get to see the, the fact that he's married now, he's grown, he's matured, he's, he, has, he has a child. Um, and that's, that's, sorry, it was Yards you wanted to know about, isn't it? That scene. Yeah, um, yeah that scene was amazing to film as well. Um, I remember uh, Stormzy being a bit worried uh, about how to, you know, how to tackle it. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, bro, just just bring real life into it. Just bring real life experiences. And he absolutely smashes it in that scene. He's as not you've an seen. experienced actor and it is such a Do you see what I'm saying? He, he's, he, great, he? he's great in the film. And, um, and yeah, when, when the audience watch it, they'll hopefully feel the same way as well. Mm. Yeah. Now, 
By contrast, one of Sam Peel's strongest scenes is a really brave directing decision that you made to strip out the sound completely in a kind of pivotal moment that we won't yeah. spoil. And the aftermath of that, yeah. realistic sound is sort of stripped away and there yeah. is this incredible gut punch yeah. sequence. Yeah. I wonder how, how you came to that <coughs> and at what point the decision was made to block it like that. Um, I think about these things well in advance about what I think would be the most impactful impactful way to, to tell the story. I mean, actually, people haven't really noticed, but there's actually probably no main dialogue in the first five minutes of the film as well. It's like there's kind of music and stuff like that and slow-mo, but, but that particular moment you're talking about was, I thought any sound would undercut what just happened. Like, it wasn't time for humour. Like, I, I can put humour in and stuff like that, and I can put, to undercut tension, sometimes I put humour in, or you have dialogue just to release the tension and let people, but there was nothing really to say. Like, what they did had to be impactful enough and then I had to get through the next few days without having scenes and scenes and scenes and scenes so I thought that that noise was kind of his headspace. Mm. Not everything after what happened to him there is a blur and it's just that all he hears is that noise so that was represented yeah. up until that point up until the point <coughs> you see him when he sort of snaps out of it. It's a lovely contrast because um, I mean yeah. once again the, the soundtrack as with the other films is yeah. like a an extra series of cast members in itself. And yeah. you, I mean you've obviously celebrated urban music British and, and music, brought forward yeah. a lot of new yeah. acts and once again that was something that was really kind of present. Yeah, we well, celebrated uh, just the whole culture really. The whole not culture. Just music. Yeah, not just music but it's important to me. It's important to me. You know, we did that on, on kidhood, on adulthood more so. Mm. And on, on this one it was important to me that we weren't just going for the names, that we were finding the people that were up and coming, that mm. were still grafting, that actually, you know, could be the next Stormzy or could yeah. be the next Krypton Conan. And, and at the same time, you have people like Krepton Conan and Chip that in the 10 years, because Chip was on adulthood soundtrack, you know, when he was just starting, you know, and in the 10 years, he's become like a, you know, huge star and, you know, Krepton Conan become huge. So it was important to have to celebrate those people as well mm -hmm. and, and, and sort of put them on and ask them if they would be on, you know, and respectfully and, and, and show how, how far we've come, yeah. you know, in this country with celebrating our own music. You know, and, and, and then with bringing the new people as in. well. There's a lovely authenticity there that we're not seeing the kind of cheesy generic postcard London. Yeah. We've got Trellick Tower. We've got yeah. iconic well, places I, that people don't necessarily well, see. Well, that's my area. That's why I've, I yeah. was born there. I lived there my whole life. I still live in that borough. So, you know, when you know people sometimes ask me like, "Bro, why don't you do a film in South?" And I'm like, you know what? I have no disrespect against South or East or North. I don't live there, mm. and I don't know it. It's not like I can't direct a film there. But I don't know it like I know West London. Mm. Like, I know, I know that borough. I know Labrick Grove. I know West London. So I can, you know, when the location scout was going, oh, I'm trying to find this. I was like, mate, don't try find it. It's there. Go to that road there, and that's where it will be. <laughs> and then they would send the pictures. I'd be like, see? Yeah, you know, think, do you know what I mean? I think, you know, like, if you look at the first two movies, and similar with this one, is that the area is almost a character in itself. So the, the West London and, and what that brings to it is like you say, is a real authenticity and a realism. Yeah. So you feel like the world that you're watching is real and there's a truth there because it is truthful. And I was like, we need that fish, fish shop because that's where I go and get my fish and chips. Yeah. Great, that's where it is. Yeah. <laughs> it did have that sense that you could kind of trail Sam around the streets. It's well, very I, much I that stories, feeling about like When it. they said, um, you know, they had a nightmare, for example, shooting in the park, you know, where I turn up at night and I, I, and I um, uh, attack Drew. And, and those guys with the nail gun and that. And there's a nightmare, like, why did you want to shoot in this park? And I said, because that's what I used to do when I was a teenager. Mm. I'd we'd skip off lunchtime at college, I'd go there with girls and we'd I'd fool about. Do you know what I mean? That and exact that, park. That exact park. And when I was younger, when I was really young, I used to play in that park. When I was a kid, like when I was two, three, four, five, yeah. that mum took me to the park. That's the park we used to go to. So I was like, that's where I'm filming. Let's talk a little bit about an echo of perhaps the yard scene in the car that I noticed in the credits. In the end credits, we've got some nice acknowledgements. Then there's a line, it's incredibly powerful, where you talk about the leeches and you ask them to work harder and to be better. Yeah. And I had to speak about yeah. that because I think a big thing in Henry's character, that challenge he's making is to make something of yourself. Yeah. And I, I noticed that on second view and I just yeah. wanted to get a little bit of insight into insight, what Exactly about. what you said. I always say stuff, um, in all my films I have like thanks and I always say, you know, all the stuff I, I want to say, I'm not one of those people that don't say what I want to say. And it's exactly that, you know, there are a lot of people that kind of don't put in the work and they leech off other people. And really what it was about is like, you have to work hard, work harder, be better, win. I use that hashtag a lot now because I feel like that's what that's what life's about. You know, I've got to, I've always worked hard, but I got to an age where I was just like, 
why am I working hard on thinking about all these other people? I need to just think about what I'm doing and the people that are, are close, close to me, you know, and I think that's important. You know, people should, should, don't ask people and be like, yo, tell me how to write. Just write, just, just write. Like, you, you can't tell someone how to, just write. You know, I'll always give advice, but just write, and that, that's really what that's about. Now, both you guys, Jason and Noel, you've both kind of told some of these hood stories. Obviously, kid hood sort of set the tone, but you've been involved in a few other projects that are the kind of, I guess, hood-style movies. What is the appeal, apart from the kind of, the, so the fact just, that they're in your heart? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was speaking on a production of, but yeah. <laughs> well, absolutely, for all of you, what is the draw of these, telling these kind of stories? Why are they important and why do we need to get them further out there? Why do they need a bigger platform? I think there's very few people that have a voice, uh, you know, nowadays as filmmakers that are representative of normal people. I think Noel Clark is one of uh, probably two or three that I could think of, and you know, Noel's had to do it sort of pretty much himself. Um, and I think, you know, you know, look, you know, Noel's incredibly ambitious and has been involved and made a whole range of of movies. But I think, you know, we speak about this a lot that you know we will always want to come back to. I suppose whether you want to put it in a genre, but I, I think it's just real stories of real life people that we can relate to. You know, like in Brotherhood, there's real couples. You know, you look at you look at Henry's character and Ashanti. That's just a real normal character couple that people can relate to that we see all over London. Um, and I think you know, yeah. So I think it's not a case of it's just a case of wanting to tell the stories that we can relate to and that we identify with and representing the people. And I think you know that's something that we shouldn't necessarily shy shy away from. It's not just are you in an estate. In London, it's across the country. Mm -hmm. That's why the first two movies did so well. People all across the, the country from a working class background can relate to these people, know people like this. Oh, that's like my friend so and so. Oh, that's like my auntie. You know, they're just normal people. And I think mm -hmm. making films for normal people for us is, is 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 good and exciting, and we should continue to do that. And you've been responsible for bringing a lot of new talent forward. I wonder, do you have any? Not resentment, but do you have any feelings about the fact that had you kind of had a launch pad like you and like the projects you guys are now involved in at a younger stage that you'd be able to have been projected onto that well, stage? We, we, we had the launch pad. Like, adulthood was a massive launch pad for yeah. all of us. The problem was that, that society wasn't ready for that. You know, had, had, had society and the industry been where it is now when we did adulthood, he would be John Boyega. Yeah. I would be Idris. Yeah. But there's no resentment. You can't resent your peers. You can't resent people that you love. Like, we love Idris, we love John. You know, we just have to go, you know what? Idris did his own path. Uh, I'm older than John, a lot we're older than John, so we had to do our own thing. Everything that they do helps us. Everything that we've done helps them. Like, you, you can't have resentment. Everyone has their own path. Everyone has their own mean? path, so you just got, you got to support them, you know? Mm. Uh, who's the director of Attack the Block, Joe Cornish? Uh, yeah, Joe Cornish, Joe yeah. Joe Cornish said in an interview yeah. that that kidhood inspired yeah. attack the block. So yeah. arguably, yeah, it was like his spiritual younger yeah. brother. So yeah. Ar yeah, arguably, arguably, you say, well, if there's no kidhood, there's no attack the block, and if there's no attack the block, then is John the megastar that he is now? Yeah, who knows? His talent probably would have taken him there. Yeah, like, and we like we all know him and we all love him like to bits. But it's like you can't people can't ignore what what our films, what we've done, what, you know, you know what's what happened, done, yeah. what it, what it's done. But I there, suppose it there just is, brings out the contrast yeah. with America. You look at someone like John Singleton and what he was able to do, and yeah. it just seems but such an a answer, pity there's, that there's we no, can't. There's no resentment. Like yeah. we support our our brothers and we support people that we like, so yeah. it's all good. And in closing, how did you manage to keep Sam at the centre of things without sure changing yourself? Obviously, you've self-directed several times now, but this time Sam had to be. You know, we wouldn't have believed if it were not a hundred percent kind of heart performance how yeah. did you keep your performance how did you keep your acting at the center when you were kind of juggling so many other i think it's just knowing the material it's definitely like the best performance i think that i've done probably since adulthood or maybe star trek in between that um but it's just uh it's just knowing the material <coughs> and it coming from a place of truth like i think the reason the reason i didn't do another film of, of this is because i don't have anything to say and i think the reason these films resonate with people is because they always come from a place of truth of where i'm at in my life you know wherever i'm at in my life i take influence from that and i think about what what these characters are, are, are like and you know and, and take it forward so you know kid adulthood was like well i'm just i'm just here and i'm doing my thing so that's what the kids were doing just there doing their thing 
adulthood was like, I did kidhood and I thought more was gonna happen and nothing happened. So like I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do another one. I don't care what anyone says, not give you know, and that was Sam's that was Sam's thing, I don't care. You know what I mean? And this one is like more considered, you know, it's older and I'm older and I, he's got kids and I've got kids and it's about how your past decisions affect you and that's where that's where this film is as well. And then you close by saying it's done. It's done. Oh, yes. All I've got left to do is thank you guys very much thank and wish you. you luck when you open. Thank Thanks you so very much. much. Thank thank you, man. Good, Good questions. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey, You Guys. Hey, You Guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys.